Hello everybody, it's Several Soulful 4 for another weekly update. I'm sorry if I still sound a little weird, uh, I have a cold. Or I'm getting over a cold, so my voice isn't the best, but yeah. So, a few things to talk about. <clears throat> uh, first, to start off before anyone leaves, um, this coming Friday till Sunday is going to be the Metathon uh, charity stream brought to you by Project Nintendo once again. Uh, this time we're changing things up just a little bit. We are going to be streaming um, mostly Kirby games, except for the last block, uh, which I'll get to. Um, instead of raising money for Child's Play Charity, we're going to be raising it for, I think, the American Suicide Prevention Foundation. or one of those. It's going to be raising money for suicide prevention um, in memory of uh, my friend Meta Luigi 98 or Meta98, um, Mike. So, uh, yeah. Um, uh, it's the timing is just because this is what uh, we we always seem to have a marathon on on uh, Valentine's weekend, um, so yeah, so that's uh, we're gonna be doing that. Um, it's actually something we had an idea for a while ago after Meta passed away. Uh, John and uh, and Dylan um, asked me if if uh, if they could do like a you know a charity stream uh, in his memory, so. Uh, they've been working on this, so I, I'm very, very, very grateful um, just for some of the people who, who don't give John his, uh, I guess, respect. Um, he doesn't have to do the charity streams, and he certainly doesn't have to do one for uh, somebody I was very close to um, who killed himself. And, uh, you know, it's just something extra on top of the horrific annoying life that he, well, I wouldn't say it's annoying, but the extremely difficult life that he has going on right now, just in terms of, you know, job and whatever, you know, I'm not going to talk about his life, um, but, you know, it's, it's not something that he has to do, and, um, I'm just very grateful that, uh, you know, it's just, it's charity, but it's also just something nice, uh, in my mind, so thank you. Uh, so yes, the people that are going to be involved with this are, I wrote it down, so I wouldn't just say a half list, uh, we have Night Called Kiwi, The Miffin Man, The Psychic Extremist, Dolphin, uh, Mr. Waterwraith, Yoshi Gamer Girl, Lightning Cloud 224, Moogle, and myself. Um, I'm going to be streaming Saturday night from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., and then on Sunday, I'm going to be streaming from 12 p.m. to 2, and from 6 to around 8.30. I'm going to be doing... I think I'm doing Rainbow Curse. Probably. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, I don't remember anymore. I should have written that down, but for the last block of the marathon, the 6 to 8.30, I'm going to be playing uh, uh, Super Luigi U. So... Uh, Nintendo Projects thing will be in the description. I hope to see you guys there, whether you can or can't donate. Uh, I hope to at least see you guys show up or help spread the word or whatever. Um, it's just a really nice thing in my friend's memory, and it's going to be a nice thing uh, for, you know, just raising money for a charity because, uh, you know, suicide prevention is, I think, something that Excuse me, I need to get tissue, and it's behind my computer. Suicide prevention is something that this country really needs more help with. Um, and, you know, this is a very good cause. I'm not saying that, uh, that uh, Child's Play is not a good cause, but they both are. But it's just nice to, you know, have a, I guess, a bit of variety. But, you know, just letting people know. So that's that. Um, I'll get to scheduling after the next part and, you know, stuff and things. Um, <clears throat> so last week I told you that I was going to be getting a PET scan. So, um, I got the PET scan. Uh, so good news. We got good news out of it. The PET scan shows, uh, the last time I got a PET scan was last February or something. Oh, it was last January because last February was when I was in the hospital for three weeks. Do you guys remember that? You should, because that's the last time that we had a Kirby Marathon, I think. Oh, God, was that a disaster. Uh, I went to the hospital in the middle of the marathon, so let's not do that again, Dovey. 
No, don't do that again, do we? Not gonna, not gonna repeat that. But um, yeah. So uh, the uh, what a PET scan does is that they uh, inject a radioactive sugar um, that specifically goes to whatever you know uh, sites that they want it to. You know, it's gonna like be up uptake by those sites, and um, then take a scan after about an hour. And see what, because uh, when something is, when a cell is metabolically active, when it's, you know, actively dividing, it needs to eat. So uh, the areas that are more active will take up more sugar. That's, you know, how it goes. And then they do a scan of the radi- little radioactive dye, and um, the brighter the area is, the more activity, which is bad. Uh, so they found that most of the areas, like the main areas, were a, were not a lot, but they were darker than they were last time. It's hard to say a lot, a little, but um, some of the areas were black, which means that there's no activity, which I'm very happy about. The main thing is my spine. The tumor that was in my spine that started everything, that I had to get the back surgery over, and uh, that really screwed up quite a bit, um, that seems to be dead. Um, the other areas are dying, but, uh, the doctor said, at least my interpretation of what he said, I, I think is what he said, is that, um, they're at a, they were at a brightness that if I were to have just been scanned for the first time, like, you know, that if that would have been my first PET scan, I didn't have a previous diagnosis of cancer, they wouldn't have immediately classified it as cancer. Like, it was below the threshold, um, for a metabolically active cancer. We do know that I have cancer, so we're still going to be treating it, and we still know it's there, but it's, uh, you know, it's below a, uh, I I think the numbers he said was that when I first came in, in almost three years ago, it was something, it would, like, the brightness, they have, like, a certain brightness scale for PET scans, so the brightness would have been, like, a, a 15 or a 20, and the threshold is a 7, like, at, at 7, they say, okay, that's, that's cancer. So I would have been like a 15 or a 20 when I came in, and now the areas that are left are like 3 and 4-ish. So, um, that's, that's good news. <laughs> that's good news. So, um, yeah, I was expecting good news, but, you know, with, <laughs> with the way things go with me, um, this has very, been very, and the doctors have said this, this has been a very unique form of cancer. It has not really listen to any of the established protocol. They've been essentially, I, I wouldn't say they've been playing it by ear because they're experts, but they've been playing it by ear and just, you know, working really hard. And I'm so thankful to the doctors that I have for being like the the nicest, most competent people that I've ever met. Um, specifically like my main doctor, Dr. John Maris. Uh, so, uh, you know, just like, working tirelessly, and, like, the the hospital, obviously, they're not only working for me, it's an entire children's hospital, because I have a a child cancer, um, it's an entire children's hospital, and they have an entire oncology ward, and they're all working for all the kids there, and, and research, and everything, and, uh, it's cool to be helping to contribute to that, but, like, they've been working so hard, and, like, you know, every time we meet, it's not just like, well, we're not really what to, what, sure what to do, so, um, I guess we'll do this, uh, it's more like, well, you know, we have this, 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 and this that we can do, but this and this, I want to wait a little bit more time on. Uh, this one is a definite possibility, but, you know, that's something that we usually try to do later. This is working out, so we're going to continue working on it. And this one uh, is still in the planning stages, but we're, we, you know, we've been coming a lot. Like, you know, two years ago when I started, they weren't even talking about half the stuff that, that uh, we ha- that I've I'm looking at now and like just all the science and everything that's that's going on and all the research and advancements in the past just two years have been really interesting to see just from the the, uh, medical side they're doing so much with cancer research um, which is why it you know it's good to to donate money towards these institutions and just helping people (laughs) but uh, you know they've been doing so much with cancer research and come like light years in just a few years and it's it's just really amazing to see and there's just like every every month just brings more and more hope to more and more people um but yeah so i'm going to be continuing on what i have been 
uh, current treatments and stuff for uh, next few months. Uh, in uh, in one month, I'm going to be hopefully getting like a bone marrow biopsy just to make sure. It's just to corroborate with the uh, with the PET scan, um, and uh, <clears throat> and I'm also going to be getting hopefully I can if my cold goes away it has been going away so uh, I'm going to be getting my central line replaced uh, so it won't be on the outside of my skin anymore it'll be under the skin which means under the skin which means I'll be able to do things like get wet which I haven't been able to do in almost three years now I haven't been able to shower or swim or any of that stuff so um, it's it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. I, I really miss swimming, but I also very much just miss things like being able to bathe or shower um, normally, uh, being able to walk outside in the rain. You guys may not know this about me, but I love the rain. Um, I used to like just go outside and get soaking wet. Um, it was amazing. <laughs> it's fun. So I miss stuff like that, and I, I couldn't because, you know, you can't, I have, I have like, dressings and stuff that you can't get wet, but, um, so I really miss, like, that. One of the side effects of not being able to bathe is that you really can't get yourself dirty either, so, like, I, I've been avoiding doing just a lot of stuff, activities that get me sweated up, things like that, uh, just because it's hard to clean myself off, so now I'm going to be able to do so much more, and it's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, we're, we're not looking into like surgery or anything just yet because, uh, one of the tumors is like in the dead center of my body, um, around the adrenal gland, which it's just very hard to get to. There are organs and vital organs in the way on like every side. And, uh, we want, we want to be able sh to be sure that it'll require one surgery and to do that, we need more, we need to be more dead, so, um, looking forward to that, though, eventually, um, and yeah, so, uh, things are going to continue on the way they are, but, uh, it's getting better, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day, um, so, it's good times are happening, and, uh, I, uh, it's just headed hope, uh, in other news, um, Continuing on the treatments means that this coming week is going to be a chemo week. Now, this is going to be a problem for uploads because I don't have any videos recorded. I was going to record a whole lot last week, and then I got a cold right in the middle of the week after I recorded last week's videos. So, um, I'm going to try to record a little today, but the Super Bowl is today, and I was going to watch it. So, uh, worst comes to worst, I'll put up the vlogs from Disney, because that is content that I have, um, I'll also maybe upload bits of the Undertale stream that I did a while back, because I do have that, you know, in the, in the, in my back pocket, um, but we'll see, I'll try to get at least some Mario RPG recorded today, but I can't make any promises. Um, uh, so yeah, that's it for content. As for stuff this week, uh, I wanted to get Paper Mar uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, but it seems to be sold out everywhere, so I ordered it online from GameStop, and it's shipping, so I should get it sometime next, this coming week. Uh, I also, when I was there, um, <laughs> we got, I got a Blathers Amiibo. Look at that. Hootie hoo! It's just good, I like it. I like Blathers a lot. <clears throat> we also bought Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Uh, last night we actually also bought the Vita version, which is digital only. The nice thing about the Vita version, it comes with the DLC and two amazing Vita themes. Uh, my little brother is currently playing it on the Vita. It's it's the way that we, we worked around the fact that I want to play it and he wants to play it. So uh, with the cross-save feature, it's nice because the cross-save... I didn't know how cross-save worked before this, and it seems to be different with each title. Cross-save un uploads to a fourth save slot that is online storage. But you can also save your game to the local slots. But So you just keep you know, uploading it back and forth, and uh, it works well. It means that I can play here, he can play on the Vita, and um, when I'm not playing on here, he could just 
upload his save file and play his game on the PS4 also. <clears throat> it is fantastic. The only problem I have with the game is uh, that most of the time it's way too easy. Except for like certain boss difficulty spikes they are just like like weak enemies weak enemies boss time this enemy you need ultimate digimon to fight um also it makes extreme use of um ability triangles like uh two types of ability triangles actually there's uh elements and digimon types is vaccine data and uh and virus and you know uh vaccine is good against virus digimon virus is good against data data is good against vaccines a triangle there it's kind of like fire emblemy um, and if you're, it, and it's like Pokemon, if you're, you know, up against a bad matchup, you do half damage, but because there's the elemental ones, you can also do a quarter damage, or you can do two times damage, or three times damage, so it's a whole thing, and if you're in a bad matchup, you're probably gonna lose, I found out, it's, you can't brute force your way through, like, boss fights, it's, it actually requires strategy on your team, wow, um, it has a lot of elements from other video games. Aside from the previous Digimon games, if you haven't played the Digimon games, you go around, you can, you know, you get, uh, you get Digimon by, uh, just when you see them, it adds to like a data thing. And when that data thing reaches a hundred, you can go to a special Digibank and convert it. And essentially it hatches you one of those Digimon at level one. So you don't have to catch them or anything. You just have to run into them a few times. So it's kind of nice. And you can Digivolve your, your, Digimon, and uh, it's permanent, it's not like in the shows, uh, and you can also, they have multiple branches, it's not just Agumon turns into Greymon, it can turn into a whole bunch of different things, um, so you, you have branching paths, you can also digit evolve them into, like, uh, previous forms, which is nice, and when you do that, it, like, raises their max level and stuff, so you can, you can make your Digimon go all over the place, you can have several of the same types, and there's all sorts of things. So it's the, the monster raising mechanic is very fun. Um, and there's a lot of them. Um, and like, you know, to get to each different type, you have to have either a certain level or certain stats or a combination. Some of the like mega Digimon you need to have uh, done specific cases, like the side quests and main quests in the game are done by cases, uh, which are essentially quests. You know, it says, you know, uh, fetch quest, you know, get me X item that I dropped, or, you know, beat this hacker, or more involved ones that involve some of the characters, so it's, it's a, I really like that, the only thing, I, I think I was trying to get to this, the only thing I don't like about the game is the localization is just really wonky, it's good, like, 99% of the time, but it's that 1%, it's the damn 1%, uh, always, like, really throws me off, it's just some of the weird, mess ups I don't know who it's like I I thought at first that they had just had a Japanese person localize it it's gonna sound racist but I thought it they just had it like you know put it through like Google Translate or something but they have they obviously had somebody that you that knew English like metaphors and and things like that that had a grasp of the English language um and like the different ways that people talk and things like that but then they just have, like, strange... I don't know, it looks like there's just nobody checked up on it. Uh, there's a lot of... It's an RPG, and it's a big RPG, so there's a lot of lines of dialogue. But, you know, I didn't run into this in Danganronpa or Persona 4 or things like that. You know, similar... Similar-y games. I know Danganronpa's not an RPG. But uh, just with, a lot, like, text-heavy PlayStation-only games. Um... And, uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't make me sad, it's just funny in general, but, um, yeah, the game has has some great humor, it's, it's pretty Japanese, so there's a lot of, like, innuendo-y humor, and I consider that more of a Japanese trait in games and anime, so, um, I wouldn't say it gets risque, but, um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of innuendo-y around female characters, um, it does have cat maids, though, and that's the important thing. Uh, but it has uh, the... It reminds me a lot of uh, Persona 4, which is nice. It, not in, term, in terms of the, I guess, the overworld, uh, walking around specific areas, uh, <laughs> the ability to go inside a television, and um, 
some of the dungeon areas are just very, very Persona 4 -y. Um, the game reminds me of, let's see, the battle system is, reminds me of Final Fantasy X, because uh, it has, like, the thing on the side that shows you, like, the turn order, and you can change it around with different attacks and stuff. Um, I had a whole thing on Twitter about this, but, um, it has a lot of elements from games that I love, and it's pretty much screaming, Let's play me, Dovey! Which I'll probably do sometime in the future. Uh, considering the fact that my first impressions video didn't get any you know, flags or anything, um, I see that as a good sign, because, you know, uh, Toei owns the rights to Digimon, and they can be kind of mean sometimes, so... But yeah, so... Uh, it's a good game. Uh, if you have a PS4 or Vita, I guess, buy it. It looks nicer on the PS4, but uh, it's good stuff. All the, sto all the story is just very good. The music is nice when there is music. Some of the open areas just don't have music. Um, there's a Coliseum feature, but you can't do it more than once, which is kind of annoying. Um, there's like an area to store some of your Digimon that's kind of like the... Uh, it's uh, called a Digi Farm, which it's it's like uh, in Pokemon the daycare. It raises your Digimon's levels, but the stats go up normally. It doesn't. It's not like uh, it, it's it's fine. Um, and you can also have your Digimon do stuff there. You can train them a little bit there. So it's kind of like a mixture of the Pokemon uh, of the daycare and the Chow Garden from Sonic Adventure. So um, it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, just, I c can keep talking about it. It's a very interesting game. There's a lot of Digimon, and, uh, the story is, is nice, too. And, uh, it just reminds me a lot of Persona 4. Uh, but yeah, so, if you have a PS4, check it out. It's good. I like it. Um, but yeah, that's, I guess that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I didn't get anything else this past week. Uh, this coming week... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I got the Poke Crate. I'm wearing the Poke Crate shirt, the Fuchsia City Ninja. The oh, Fuchsia Gym Ninja. Uh, the Poke Crate was okay. Uh, check out the video. I hate. <laughs> this... <laughs> I'm sorry I make these faces at you guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I have a loot anime crate coming this week, hopefully. And I'm going to try a Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. Um, I got very far in. Uh, Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon also, and the story is pretty crazy. And then it steals a scene from Advent Children towards the end of the game, so that was kind of funny. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this update. So, if you forgot what I talked about, Metathon coming this uh, this weekend. Link in the description to the Nintendo uh, Nintendo Project uh, website. I really hope to see you guys there. Um, scans were good. I'm live. And, uh, yeah, I don't know about videos this week. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.